today we start with a new topic that is migration what do we understand by the meaning of migration a migration means what when a movement of an individual or a group of people from one area to another area is called as migration so when a person is moving from one geographical area to another geographical area then we say that the person is migrating okay now the person who is migrating he is called as migrant a person who is migrating he is called as migrant and the process of migration is known as migration okay the process of traveling from one place to another is known as migration now migration can be short period it can be long period it can be temporary it can be permanent as per the convenience or as per the situation the mode of migration keeps on changing let us study the definition of migration what is migration the movement of people or a group of people from one geographical area that is place to another with the intention of settling permanently or temporarily at a new location that is a geographic region so when a single person is moving or a group of people are moving with an intention of what to get settled to the new geographical area so that settlement can be permanent it can be temporary for short period of time at the new location the movement is often over long distances and from one country to another but internal migration within a country is also possible so this movement can be an international migration that is from one country to another country as well as it can be an internal migration that is within a country okay people may migrate as individuals in a family unit or in large groups so the people they can migrate as an individual and push and pull factors okay now what is push factors push means what what is the meaning of push means when you push someone that is to move it away from yourself okay so in an area there are certain factors that repel the population or force them to leave and at a certain place is called as push factor now what is push factor there are some areas which are unpleasant which are not flexible for human settlement okay at certain at this moment what happens the population is repelled the population is thrown out or the population is made or a condition that they have to leave the situation comes that they have to leave that particular area now push factors are of two types one is voluntary migration and second is forced migration now what is the difference between voluntary migration and forced migration first voluntary migration means what many people choose to migrate these are voluntary migrants many are economic migrants now voluntary migration means what when a person he willingly chooses to move the pull factor pull factors are the expectations that attract people to new places they are usually positive things such as job opportunities better standard of living better education and better health care so what are the pull fa uh, pull factors now this is opposite to the push factors as the push factors they repel pull factors they attract now here how the push factors are negative uh, things whereas the pull factors are positive things so what are the positive things job opportunity better standard of living <clears throat> better education better health care are all the pull factors the factors that attract population are better employment fertile soil good climate easy availability of drinking water well developed infrastructural facilities okay what are the reasons of migration reasons of migration are pull factors push factors okay now pull factors they work like a magnet healthcare money job education peace food 
city life so all these are the pull factors and what are the push factors climate poverty war or the farmer's life all these things are push factors okay now there are some examples there are some situations they have given how the push factors and pull, pull factors they interrelate now if there is one area where there is a lot of unemployment so ultimately what happens the person from this area is going to migrate to somewhere where there is good and uh, good employment okay so from this area this person will be pushed and this area is going to pull or this area is going to attract the person because they are having the potential for employment next a lack of service and amenities if a, so if an area there are no no services there are no amenities then from there the person will be pushed he will be repelled and he will be attracted where where there is a better service provision so these are the push and pull factors which are interrelated similarly poor safety and security from here the person will be pushed and it will be pulled at the safer atmosphere concern about high crime rates from here the person will be pushed and it will come to the low crime rates factor okay crop failure drought flooding poverty war all these are the negative things which come under push factors fertile land good food supply as risk uh, less risk of natural hazard political security great wealth or affluence a more attractive climate a more attractive quality of life all this comes under pull factor okay now we start the different types of migration now this migrations are divided into various types like motivational based migrations like distance based migration time based migration so they are uh, the migrations are divided into different different groups first we'll study about the motivational based migration now what do we understand by motivational based migration the meaning of motivational based migration is that they are based on the motive of people what is the motive what is the aim of the people okay now they are divided into two parts that is economic migration and social migration okay let us study about economic migration now when now we will uh, we'll study this next type of migration that is distance based migration in motivational based migration there were two two types one was economic migration and second was the second was social migration now in the distant based migration uh, we need to study some concepts first internal migration there are short distance within a country when the migration takes place within a country when a person do not cross the boundary of a country it is a short distance migration that is called as internal migration international migration they are the long distance from one country to another country now this type of migration is a long distance migration it takes place from one country to another country the boundary of one country is crossed and it is entered that person enters the boundary of another country intra district migration people migrate within a district so when a person migrate from one village uh, to another village from one town to another town in a district then we called as we call it as intra district and inter district means what people moving from one district to another district so when people they move from one district to another district then we call it as inter district migration same like intra district and inter district there is inter state and intra state migration also now inter state migration means what people migrate from one state to another state for example people migrating from maharashtra to karnataka and intra state means what people migrate within a state means people is a people is migrating from pune to mumbai within maharashtra state these are the factors you should know about the distance based migration now we'll study about the types of distance based migration okay now distance based migration is divided into two types first is short distance 
and second is long distance okay first we will study about short distance and its further sub parts now what is short distance migration a migration within a country the migrants do not cross the boundaries of the country they are classified in four types so as i told you before itself that it is a uh, migration that takes place within a certain country the boundaries of the countries are not crossed okay now we'll study the next sub parts of those <coughs> short distance migration first is ruler to ruler migration rural means what a village so from one village to another village it is very common where labors are found it mainly occurs due to the failure in agriculture drought prone areas the people migrate in the areas where agriculture is more stable it is also called as seasonal migration so this type of migration basically is done by the poor people or the laborers okay so in the search of agriculture wherever the plantation is there wherever the soil is fertile these people they migrate agriculture or drought situation wherever it comes the people they leave their place and they migrate at some other places where do they migrate to the agricultural stability place okay where the water is good where the fertile land is seen so this is also called as seasonal migration example labor going to sugarcane growing areas at the time of harvesting as you all know that uh, while harvesting of sugarcane you need lot of labor so many laborers they go and migrate to such places where the harvesting of sugarcane is done next is ruler to urban area that is from village to city area it is mainly found in developing countries and developed countries so this type of migration is seen in developing and developed countries people move from village for education employment better lifestyle so from village usually people they move for higher educations for employment and for better lifestyle to the city area that is urbanized area example people migrate from konkan region to mumbai as konkan is less developed than mumbai so they have less facilities as compared to mumbai so the people they move from konkan region to mumbai. next urban to urban now this is from one city to another city this type of migration takes place between two cities this migration is higher in highly urbanized countries of the world the aspiration of better job higher education facilities and specialized jobs are the main factors so this is mainly seen in the highly urbanized country of the world so why this type of migration is done from one city to another city to get a better job to higher or to get a higher education facility okay so these are the reasons why the people they migrate the basic reason for this type of migration is what for the economic factor that is for money in uh, it is basically related to the economic factor so they are not concerned with time nor they are concerned with distance the basic motive is to earn the money now last is urban to ruler now this is very less common as compared to all other types okay you all know once a person starts living in a city he doesn't uh, he doesn't feel good in the village area so this type of migration is very less as compared to other migration people prefer to live away from the polluted and congested area so there are some people they don't feel comfortable in the pollution polluted areas whereas in the congested areas they like or they love to live in some uh, soft area that is uh, free of space full of space so such people they avoid or they move from urban to rural areas many of them prefer to travel to their workplace which can be possible due to the efficient transportation so many of them they travel from their workplace to some other uh, to their office place or uh, to their home there is some distance okay as they don't want to stay in the congested city area example in india people after retirement prefer to go back 
to their native villages as the cost of living is less and they can do after their own they can look after their own properties so in india as i told you before many of them after their retirement they choose to go to their respective villages so so as they can look after their property as well as the cost of living is or the cost of living is less now the next topic is long distance migration now in this type of migration the people they move from one country to another country okay they don't move within a country they move from one country to another country they have to cross the boundaries of their countries to move into the another country this type of migration is generally for longer period so as the distance is more these people also move there for some longer period of time it is mainly for developing countries and developed countries so mainly developing countries and developed countries uh, are seen in the long distance of migration in past many kings had aspiration to expand their kingdom and they invaded and conquered the other countries so in the past also we have studied in the history that many kings because of their greed or because of their aspirations they used to invade to the other countries or the other territories and they used to expand their kingdom travelers traveled in the search of new land so there were many travelers who invented new lands who searched a new land refugees migrated at different places during wars so refugees they were compelled or they had no option so they used to migrate from one place to another due to the war situation the higher education better life attractive salary has enhanced migration so because of more education because of better lifestyle and attractive salaries the migration is in boom in today's world discovery of transport and communication mineral oil has also made people to migrate so discovery of mineral oil transportation and communication facilities so all these things make the migration convenient today the environment uh, today the advancement in the technology and globalization has added different dimension to the migration so because of all this advanced technology and globalization migration has got a different scope now we study the next type that is the time based migration the time based migration is classified on the basis of the duration of time so how much duration we require to stay at a certain place or how much time we require to stay at a certain place is going to be classified as short term migration and long term migration now first we'll study about <coughs> short term migration in this migration people migrate daily periodically and seasonally now <clears throat> this migration it can be as a daily purpose it can be periodically periodically that is for some small instance of time and seasonally means what for a year or for two years people visit hill station beaches or go to the tour for few days and come in this type of migration so people visiting some place and returning back within a short period of time comes under short term migration now what is long term migration these are the permanent migrations so once a person is moving from origin to destination and he permanently stays at a certain place that thing comes under long term migration these people change their residence so once they move they permanently settle at some place and they change their permanent residence the motive of migration is economic so what is the motive it is to gain some economy to improve their lifestyle it takes place in longer distance so this type of migration takes place in long distance example people go to mumbai and get settled at that place from a certain village in a search of job this is a example of long term migration 